In this module, we will review how to turn the autopilots and all the FDs on. First, let us review how to engage the autopilot. Autopilot on. You are the captain and pilot flying. The autopilot is an assistance to the pilot to fly the aircraft. The autopilot works within the aircraft normal flight envelope. Therefore, the pilot can turn it on whenever the aircraft is within this flight envelope. Here, we are just airborne, above 100 feet from the ground. Engage Autopilot 1. The FMA confirms the engagement of Autopilot 1. As a general rule, when the captain is pilot flying, Autopilot 1 is used. When the first officer is pilot flying, Autopilot 2 is used. This ensures that each Autopilot will be alternatively operated. The Autopilot can be used just after liftoff from, say, 100 feet until the end of the landing rollout. In most cases, only one autopilot can be engaged at a time. However, in case of an ILS automatic approach, both autopilots may be turned on at the same time. This ensures the best level of redundancy required to safely achieve auto lands, auto rollouts, or low altitude go arounds. As a consequence, once cleared for an ILS approach, the pilot presses the approach push button to arm localizer and glide slope modes. The second autopilot may then be turned on. AP2 push button has been pressed to on. The FMA confirms the engagement status of both autopilots as well as the resulting level of redundancy achieved. Dual this will dictate the minimum possible DH. You will see this in more detail in the guidance mode modules. Now, let us review how to disconnect or turn the autopilot off. You are now flying an automatic approach. When in sight of the runway, you decide to take over manually. To turn the autopilot off, you press the red Autopilot Disconnect push button, also known as Takeover push button, located on either side stick. The weather is fine. You are number one for approach. Disconnect the Autopilot. Turning an Autopilot off via the Takeover push button triggers the following temporary warnings. A cavalry charge or a warning for around one second. The master warning flashing several seconds. An autopilot off a red message on the right column of the engine warning display, several seconds. By pressing the takeover push button again, you will cancel all these warnings immediately. Notice that, on the FCU, the autopilot's lights are extinguished. On the FMA, autopilot 1 plus 2 is no longer displayed. The approach capability is downgraded to CAT 1, and on the ECAM system, all warnings are now off. The recommended technique to set autopilots off is to press the autopilot disconnect push button on a side stick. They can also be set to off by acting on the side stick or rudder pedals with a force beyond a given threshold or pressing an autopilot push button on the FCU when the corresponding autopilot is on. These last two actions lead to a repetitive cavalry charge, a permanent activation of the master warning, and a permanent red autopilot off warning on the left column of the engine warning display. This is considered by the flight guidance as an involuntary autopilot disconnection. 
The FG also drives the flight director FD symbols displayed on either PFD. The flight director is an assistance provided to the pilots to accurately hand fly the aircraft along a given segment of a trajectory. The flight director provides guidance orders to the pilots as a function of the guidance modes and targets selected on the FCU. These orders are materialized by specific symbols, e.g. crossbars. The flight director symbols are displayed on either PFD. The symbols on PFD1 are driven by FG1. Those on PFD2 are driven by FG2. The engagement status of the flight director is indicated on the FMA. Here the flight director symbols are called crossbars and are referenced to the aircraft attitude symbol. To turn the flight director on or off, use the flight director push button located on either EFIS control panel. When a flight director is on, the green bars of the corresponding push button are illuminated. Here both FDs are on. Let's turn them off. Each pilot presses his flight director push button. Flight director bars are removed from the PFD. Flight director engagement status is cleared on the FMA. Flight director push button green lights are extinguished. Note that we have switched the autopilot one off for you. When both autopilots and FDs are off, note that all mode fields, except the one of the autothrust, here MAC, are blank on the FMA. It is important to notice that if both FDs are set to off while autopilots are off, autothrust, if active, is automatically in speed mode or MAC mode. Let's now turn the FDs back on. Suppose that the captain presses his flight director push button first and then the first officer. Flight director 1 is on. The crossbars are displayed on PFD1. The FMA on both PFDs indicates 1 flight director as flight director engagement status, meaning that only flight director 1 is on. The flight director 1 associated modes. Notice that flight director 1 push button illuminates in green on the EFIS control panel. Let us now turn the first officer's flight director back on. Note, when both autopilots and FDs are off, and you turn one of them back on again, it comes up in basic modes, vertical speed heading, or flight path angle track. Both FDs are now on. The crossbars are displayed on PFD2. Both FMAs indicate one flight director two as flight director engagement status, meaning that both FDs are on. The on-site flight director guidance modes. Note that Flight Director 2 push button illuminates in green on the EFIS control panel. As a general rule, it is strongly recommended to set both FDs on or off at the same time. Let's review the Flight Director symbols. The Flight Director crossbars are two independent bars, referring to the aircraft attitude symbol, a horizontal bar, indicating the pitch command, and a vertical bar, indicating the roll command. The roll bar is replaced by a yaw bar index for takeoff and landing rollout functions from an ILS equipped runway. The yaw bar helps the pilot to properly track the localizer on ground while in low visibility condition. The principle of the flight director crossbars has been reviewed in the EFIS module. Let's review another flight director symbology.
We have seen the flight director crossbar symbology, referring to the aircraft attitude symbol. The other flight director symbology refers to the flight path vector, FPV or bird. The bird can be displayed on off from the PFD by pressing the heading vertical speed track flight path angle push button on the FCU. Click on the heading vertical speed track flight path angle push button. Notice that on the PFD, the bird is now displayed. On the FCU, the indications have been modified to reflect the change to track flight path angle. Let's have a closer look at the PFD. The flight path vector, FPV, is displayed. The crossbars are removed and replaced by the flight path director, FPD, referenced to the flight path vector. In case flight director bars are displayed and the guidance modes are vertical speed and or heading, these modes are automatically changed to track flight path angle if you select the bird on. Have a look while we do this for you. First, check that flight path vector is displayed. You can see that the mode changes are outlined on the FMA with white boxes. Notice also that the heading target has been changed to a properly synchronized track target. Let's see an example of a manual track change. We will concentrate on the PFD. When flying manually, the objective is to center and align the flight path vector on the FPD. We will turn onto a track of 140. The FPD commands a roll to turn on to the selected track. The aircraft is rolled until the flight path vector and FPD are aligned. Approaching track 140, the FPD demands a roll to level the wings. When in track flight path angle, the FPD reverts to flight director bars in case of go around. You will practice the use of the flight path vector and the FPD and the simulator.